Mia, I have a little favor to ask of you tomorrow. I need you to take me somewhere in the car just after noon. Hi, Agatha. It's nice to hear from you. I'm really sorry. I have plans tomorrow afternoon, so I won't be able to do that. I'll be free in the evening, so how about I come and pick you up then? Plans? What on earth is a stay-at-home housewife doing making plans? Yes, I have plans. Well, in that case, you'll postpone those plans until next week. My shopping trip is far more important than anything you could have going on in your life. You want me to take you out shopping? That's right. I won a gift voucher at the last neighborhood watch meeting. Things this exciting never usually happen to me, so I thought I'd make the most of it and head over to the shopping mall that recently got built in Peepstown. Those vouchers are usually valid for a quite a long time. Have you checked the small print on the back? Besides, Peepstown is a two-hour drive. I'm happy to take you, but I can't do it tomorrow. Can we take a rain check? No, I want to go tomorrow! I usually never win at these things. I've got a spring in my step and I want to claim my prize while the excitement is still fresh in my mind. You understand that, don't you? Sure I do, but... Look, Agatha, I'd love to take you, but I just can't. I'm really sorry. I'll take you another time, I promise. Oh dear, Mia, how very disappointing. Whatever are we going to do with you? Did you forget what I told you? I hope you haven't forgotten how lucky a poverty-stricken high school dropout like you is to be married to my high-earning Harvard graduate like my son. In spite of your unfortunate background, in my infinite kindness, I said I'd be willing to acknowledge your marriage if you worked your very hardest to win my approval. Did you forget? No, I didn't forget. Me and you are going to drift further and further apart if you continue to refuse to help me when I need you to. Is that what you want? Agatha, please. I mean this with the utmost respect. But just because I want to win your approval doesn't mean I'll do whatever you ask me to at a moment's notice, sacrificing my personal life in the process. I want you to acknowledge me as your son's wife, not your chauffeur. Don't get an attitude with me, young lady. Your suitability as my son's wife is exactly what I'm asking you to prove to me. If making him happy was your number one priority, you'd do whatever it took to contribute to the well-being of the family as a whole. Not just affairs within your own home. Supporting your mother-in-law is supporting your husband, and supporting your husband is your job as a wife. But I have unavoidable plans tomorrow. I'm really, really sorry, but please, can we reschedule? Ugh! Oh my, why do you have to be so stubborn? How much clearer do I have to make it that I want to go tomorrow? Sorry. My son is an elite high earner. There's not a woman on this planet who wouldn't be proud to have him on her arm. You hit the jackpot by landing a guy like him. You should be counting your lucky stars. He was kind enough to marry someone so much further down the social ladder than himself. If he had any sense about him, he wouldn't have looked at you twice. In a fair world, the best someone like you would be able to get is an overweight store clerk, or maybe a homeless drug addict. In spite of that, much to my misfortune, he married you. Now ask yourself, who was it who raised that lovely, kind husband of yours? You. That's right, me. Which is why my word is law. You're intelligent enough to understand that, aren't you, dear? You should know that my son is a good boy and he'll do whatever I say. Well, apart from marrying you, obviously. But that's the only time he ever disobeyed me. I don't know what got into him, if I'm honest. Just what does he see in you? I could understand the lack of educational history if you were gorgeous, but no, you don't even have that going for you. You're free to say what you like about me, but I can't answer that. Why don't you ask him? What's the point? Even if I did ask him, the answer wouldn't be anything I could agree with. Anyway, the bottom line here is that my shopping trip is your number one priority tomorrow, and you better not forget it. Agatha, please. How many times do I have to tell you I can't possibly take you tomorrow? 
Please reschedule. Literally any other day is fine. I promise I'll make time. I'll take you there and drive you home, and you can spend as long as you like inside the mall. Do not talk back to me, young lady. Back in my day, you would have gotten the belt for this kind of cheek. Gah, your lack of education is showing. I knew allowing my son to marry a moron was a bad idea. It's pointless talking to you. You listen, young lady, and you listen good. If you don't come and pick me up tomorrow afternoon, I'll never acknowledge you as my son's wife for as long as I live. Hi, Mia, darling. How are you? Listen to this. My friend ordered me some new supplements this week. They're supposed to re-energize your chakras and fill you with positive energy. But it turns out they're a little more expensive than I first thought. At this rate, I'm going to struggle to get by this month. I see. Did you take all the supplements yet? No, only a few. So why not file for a return? Normally, there's a short window where if you're not satisfied with the product, you can send it back, right? Just say you're disappointed with them and you should get your money back. Excuse me? What on earth are you talking about? Are you seriously suggesting I returned something I already paid for? <laughs> uh, yes. You just said to yourself you can't afford them. I don't see how you've got any other choice. How dare you! Are you trying to embarrass me? I just told you my friend ordered me them from the internet. There's no way I can send them back. She might think I'm poor. Well, what are you going to do then? I'm not going to do anything. My son is going to send me some money. See to it that I get $600 ASAP. $600? Are you kidding me? I've never heard of a supplement that expensive. What did you say they were for again? They're for energizing my chakras and unlocking the powers of my subconscious mind. It says on the packet that they'll do wonders for my health and happiness, so I need them. My friend said they're only for highly intelligent, special people. Agatha, please don't take this the wrong way. But do you think there's any chance you might have been scammed? This all seems a little suspicious to me. Scammed? <laughs> Give me a break. As if someone as clever as me would fall for something like that. Besides, she's been buying me things on the internet for years now. Why would she start playing dirty tricks like that on me all of a sudden? As usual, it seems like there's nothing to be gained from speaking to you. Where's my son? Is he home yet? No, it seems like things have been piling up at work lately. He's been doing more overtime than usual. Work? Please. If you ask me, the reason he's so busy lately is because he's married to you. I don't think it's a coincidence that he seems so much more stressed ever since you two tied the knot. He hardly even answers my calls anymore. If I'm lucky, he'll respond to my messages once a fortnight. Like I said, he's busy. He has a lot on his plate right now. You shouldn't take it personally. Me taking anything from my boy personally? <laughs> don't be ridiculous. He loves his mother more than anything. I know full well how demanding his job can be. You don't make 140 k a year by lazing around doing nothing. He's bound to be busy on an enormous salary like that. Not that I'd expect someone like you to understand what that means. Huh? $140,000 a year? My husband makes $140,000 a year? That's right, I know! I saw his tax returns while I was rummaging through your filing cabinets when I stopped over at your house last year. Oh, my heart filled with pride the moment I saw them. You have no idea how good it felt to find out my son is one of life's winners. Wait, you rummaged through our... Uh, wait, I get it now. Which is why it should be no problem for him to lend his mother a measly $600. Well, what do you say? Will you see to it what he does? Hmm, I wonder. Am I right thinking this wouldn't be the first time you've borrowed money from him? No, it wouldn't. Why? 
If you pile enough specks of dust on top of each other, eventually you'll have a mountain. We can't just go handing out hundreds of dollars every time you decide you want to buy something. What am I supposed to do? It's not like I can help it. I need money to live on, after all. In that case, get a job. You better be joking. Do you have any idea how hard I worked to raise that boy all on my own? I was a single mother. I could never work because I had him to think of. And now you're telling me get a job after all this time? Like it's just that simple? Single mother? What the hell? You have a very unusual way of interpreting the past. Your husband passed away after Chris had already grown up and flown the nest. Besides, these days even people like housewives with massive gaps on their resumes can find work if they look hard enough. The attitudes companies take towards that kind of thing is changing. You shut your goddamn stupid mouth! Shut up and give me my money now! No! We can't keep on funding your irresponsible spending like this. You might think Chris lending you money is good for you, but without the means to bring in money of your own, it'll only hurt you in the long run. Needless to say, it's not good for us either. Let's face it, you don't need chakra boosting supplements to get by, do you? And even if you did, they sure as hell wouldn't be important enough to justify going into debt for. How dare you speak to me like that, you impertinent little brat! If you're looking for a fight, you're going the right way about it! So, shall I take this as you refusing to send me my own son's money? Is that what you're doing? I know your game, woman. You're trying to hog it all to yourself, aren't you, you shameless gold digger? I'm so not a gold digger. In that case, prove it. I want fifteen hundred dollars. Huh? What? You want how much? I want fifteen hundred dollars every month. This is non-negotiable, and if you value your position in this family, you'll need to see it that I get it. What are you talking about? Why did the numbers shoot up all of a sudden? I've been holding off until now. You see, I'm so kind and thoughtful, I didn't want to rock the boat or cause any trouble. But I wish I'd just said this from the start. It's such a pain in the butt to have to ask for paltry sums of money every time. And I'm sure you'd rather I didn't bother you every five minutes asking for top-ups. It makes far more sense for you to send it monthly in one lump sum. Great, it's decided. Send me $1,500 a month. I'll be phoning my son to let him know about our new arrangement soon. Please stop this. Impossible is impossible, and putting pressure on us won't change that. How many times do I have to tell you not to talk back, you little brat? Did your mother instill no discipline in you? What am I saying? Of course she didn't. You will obey your mother-in-law, you worthless failure of a wife. If you don't see to it that I get my money, I'll make sure my son divorces you. One word from me is all it would take, so I suggest you think very carefully about how you proceed from here. Mia, I checked my bank account today again, but the money still hasn't gone in. Explain yourself. That's right, because we didn't send it. Ugh, why you... You're still saying that? You think you're so clever, don't you? My son makes 140 k a year. The least you could do is see to it that I have enough money to get by. I bet this is your doing, isn't it? You've probably been whispering all sorts of nasty things about me in his ear. You floundering frustration of a wife. Divorce my son and get out of our lives forever. You keep harping on about your son's salary, but I'm the one who makes $140,000 a year? Huh? 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 Which part don't you get? I said I'm the one who makes $140,000 a year. I, me. The tax returns you found while you were rummaging through our filing cabinets without permission were mine. What are you talking about? I've never heard such a load of nonsense in my life. There's no way a loser who dropped out of high school whose highest professional achievement is becoming a housewife could ever make that much money. Yep, this is all bluster. I know it. My son might be a salary man, but even still he has to file tax returns if he makes 140 k a year. I'm the one making all that money and that's God's honest truth. 
Did you actually check the name on the tax returns? Or did you get too excited by the fact you were doing something you shouldn't have been to notice? I don't think I did. But they were obviously my sons! Wrong. I'm the breadwinner in this family. Chris doesn't have a job. Huh? What? Wait, what? My son is unemployed? Don't tell lies! If my son's unemployed, how is there a roof over your heads? How is there food on the table? How are the utilities paid? Like I just told you, because I'm the breadwinner. Nonsense! I don't believe it. My son is outstanding. He's been a high achiever his whole life and works for a major global company. Why would he take that so lightly by quitting and throwing it all away? It certainly wasn't a decision he took lightly. Sure, he made a lot of money, but his working conditions were so awful it wasn't worth it. What are you saying? He quit his job because it was difficult? He quit because he had a nervous breakdown. He was admitted to the hospital for a few weeks later last year, and he's been visiting for weekly checkups ever since. A nervous breakdown? Ridiculous! You're lying! My son is no pansy! He's stronger than that! Besides, every time I come over, he comes home in his suit. How do you explain that if he's not working? Ha! Gotcha! He wears the suit to stop you finding out he quit. What? Why would he go out of his way to trick me like that? What's wrong with you? If anyone needs admitting to a mental hospital, it's you! Why would you lie like this? As if my son would quit his job without even telling me, his beloved mother, first. It's precisely because of your god-awful attitude towards practically everything that he didn't feel comfortable speaking to you about it. My god-awful attitude? Ugh! Here we go again! Shut up! Just shut up! Just because you don't want to send me $1,500 a month, money which is rightfully mine because I gave birth to him, by the way, doesn't justify making up vicious lies. You probably think that just because my son is so kind and caring, you can walk all over him like your own personal doormat, don't you? I know your game. You're trying to control him. Well, I won't let you get away with it. You two will be getting a divorce. Now, if you have a brain in that head of yours, I suggest you get your things together and leave before I'm forced to come and eject you from the premises by force. Mia, you two didn't move house, did you? Oh no, you didn't go to our old house by any chance, did you? Your old house? I knew it! Where are you right now? Not telling you. I phoned my son's company too. It was just as you said, he doesn't work there anymore. He resigned last year. Great, so I take it you understand now. Who it is that's supporting this family? It really has been you all along, hasn't it? I was convinced it was my son. That's right. It's me and it's always been. I'm so sorry. I was convinced it was Chris. I had no reason to believe otherwise, so surely you can hardly blame me. I mean, you were a stay-at-home housewife and you two got married, weren't you? I might have stepped down from my position at the insurance company, but I carried on running my own business as usual. I was only working part-time hours to begin with, because I was still adapting to newly married life and had a lot to do around the house. But I realized I might have to start bringing in more money when Chris's mental health took a turn for the worse towards the end of last year. I doubled my hours, and that's when the big money started coming in. I had no idea things would go as well as they did, and I can't tell you what a relief it was. I see. I had no idea you were so capable and talented, Mia. It looks like I had the wrong idea about you. I see you in a different light now that I know all this. I hereby officially recognize you as my son's wife and my daughter-in-law. Oh, you do? Now, if we can just move back onto the topic of my monthly allowance. $1,500 a month shouldn't be a problem what with you making so much money, should it? Go on, help an old dear out. I think this could be the beginning of a beautiful relationship between me and you, sweetie. I've always seen potential in you, I just didn't want to say it, lest you get complacent. I promise to treat you like my own daughter from now on. 
Nah, I'm good, thanks. We'd prefer it if you forgot about us. What's that supposed to mean? It means exactly what it sounds like. Please think of me and your son as no longer existing. What? Why are you being like this? But you're my beloved daughter-in-law, my Mia. Besides, I finally acknowledged you as part of this family. Isn't that what you wanted all this time? The only reason you acknowledge me is because you found out I make $140,000 a year? You'd still be treating me like dirt if you didn't know. You'd be comical if you weren't such a disgrace. No, dear, you've got this all wrong. It's not like that at all. It's not about the money at all. How could I not acknowledge you when you're so clever, capable, and talented? How could I not acknowledge you when you're such an important member of this family? When you were there for my son when he needed you most, when you're continuing to support him even now. Well, in that case, thanks. I accept your expression of goodwill, but that doesn't change the fact that me and my husband want nothing more to do with you for long as we live. It's gonna take more than an apology to make up for the years of suffering you put Chris through, for the way you bullied and belittled me ever since me and him got married. What's that supposed to mean? I put Chris through years of suffering? I don't follow. And I bullied you? Don't be so dramatic. I never did any such thing. You know the scariest thing is that you genuinely believe that. Do you think Chris had a nervous breakdown due to work alone? He's strong, and he's certainly not a pansy as you put it. The way you treated him had a huge part to play too. Me? Let's face it. You've always been obsessed with the idea of him becoming a high achiever, haven't you? If he didn't get the highest grade, he wasn't good enough. If he didn't get into the best company, he wasn't good enough. He's been living under the way of your unattainable standards since the day he was born. There's only so much pressure one human being can take. What's worse, when he quit his job, he thought he'd finally be able to rest, recuperate and take a break from all the stress. But no, he still had you nagging and complaining at him, begging for money like a woman possessed at every opportunity. Why do you think he doesn't answer your calls now? No matter how much he worked, no matter how much overtime he put in, it was never enough. He was barely ever able to spend any of his own salary on himself because it all went to you. When he finally refused because he knew that if he continued, we wouldn't be able to make ends meet. Far from understanding and accepting it, you came over in floods of tears and stole them from us while we weren't looking. I was sure my son was the one bringing in the money. He worked for a major company, and I didn't see any harm in borrowing a little here and there. A little here and there? Don't make me laugh. And major company or not, everyone knows the regular cubicle workers don't make much money. Besides, anybody, no matter how rich, would soon run out of money if they were lending thousands to their pestering mother every five seconds. Do you think money grows on trees? But you're different, right, Mia? You make 140 k a year! You're practically part of the 1%. I'm your mother-in-law, your family, and I'm asking you to help me out here. I have no intention of giving someone who treats my husband like their own personal ADM an emotional punch bag a cent of my money. You throw the most hysterical of tantrums the moment you don't get your own way. You kick, scream, and shout. You hurl all kinds of abuse at me and Chris. How can I think of someone who only pretends to care about us as long as we're giving her money as my mother-in-law? I do not hurl abuse at either of you! You're exaggerating! I was merely giving my opinion. Your opinion? No, you were trying to guilt us into giving you money. You never listen to a word Chris says. Remember how the moment you couldn't get through his cell phone, you charge into his office demanding to speak to him, embarrassing the hell out of him in front of his co-workers? How can he think of someone who'll stop at nothing to get her own way, with no regard for feelings, as his mother? Fine, I accept it. My behavior was less than desirable. I'm sorry. I won't do anything like that ever again, I promise. Really? Actually, forget it. I guess it doesn't matter if you're sincere or not. Even if you wanted to try pulling that crap on us again, we're gonna make sure you're not able to. Please don't say things like that, Mia. Surely we can talk this through without doing anything drastic. Please, just send me the money. I'm not joking when I say I don't have enough to get by. Really? Sucks to be you. You should really be mad at yourself for blowing your husband's entire inheritance on worthless crap right now. 
At this rate, I'm not even going to be able to afford this month's gas bill. If you don't help me, there will be no food on the table and the lights will go out. Please, Mia, I need you. I won't be able to get by much longer without your help. Not my problem. We're cutting you out of our lives forever. No, don't. I'm so sorry. I'll never do anything to cause you nuisance ever again. I'll be more thoughtful. I can do it, I swear. Just give me a chance. I'll never annoy or upset you again for as long as I live. In that case, you won't keep asking me for a monthly allowance because it's an annoying nuisance. That's different. Please, can you just cover me for this month? I won't ask again after that, please. I promise, I swear on my life, I'll never ask you for another cent. For now, it's just this month. Next month, it'll be just next month. It never ends. How do I know you ask? Because that's exactly what you've been doing to Chris the whole time. That's why we're cutting you out of our lives. Your promises mean nothing. I'm begging you! Mia, please. I'm so, so sorry. No. Contrary to what you thought, I won't let you walk all over me like Chris did. You've said it countless times yourself, did you? That there's no point in talking to someone like me. Why would you bother wasting your time trying? The less you expect of me, the better. I'm a worthless failure of a wife after all. After that, apparently my mother-in-law gathered together all the things from her house she didn't need. Including all the ornaments and mementos her husband had left behind. And all the things she'd bought with the money she stole from Chris. She sold them in a desperate bid to scrape together the money for the month's utilities. Somehow or other, she actually managed to get by and delayed the lights going off by another month. But having run out of things to sell and having exactly zero income of her own, the prospects of her performing another miracle next month are slim. I blocked her on my husband's phone so she couldn't do any more damage to his mental health than she already had. She still begs me for money from time to time, but I just ignore her. It's encouraging to see she's at least managing to keep up with the payments on her phone contract. The only reason I didn't block her myself is because I was curious to see how things went for her after we cut her out of our lives. But the messages are getting a little boring now, and I'll probably end up blocking her after another month or two. The friend, who's used to sell her ridiculously overpriced supplements, pulled a conveniently timed vanishing act on Agatha after realizing she had no money left. She really was a sitting duck, bad with money and easily deceived, a scammer's wet dream. I guess it's just like they say, a fool and their money are easily parted. I have no idea what the future holds for my mother-in-law. But one thing's for sure, I don't have an ounce of sympathy for her. Maybe it's petty, but I want her to suffer and experience as much pain as she put me and my husband through. The improvement in his mental health was enormous. When he was finally freed of his mother, who it turned out was the main source of his stress all along. He's starting to look more and more like his old self every day, and I'm super thrilled about that. As well as needing to visit the hospital less and less these days, he's also gradually beginning to help me with my online business. It's great to see some structure returning to his life. That said, I understand he's been through a lot. I don't expect anything unreasonable of him. He's important to me, and I'll continue supporting him for as long as he needs me to. I want him to be happy, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for us. One thing's for certain, I'll be there for him through thick and thin, no matter what.